My name is Dimitris Christopoulos. I am uh, the Vice President of the International Federation for Human Rights, and I'm Associate Professor of Political Science at the Pantheon University of uh, Athens. The crisis provokes a, a, a negative uh, domino on human rights violations. You can never uh, believe that you will uh, start violating or downgrading social rights, such as the right to health or labor or education, without uh, affecting political or individual rights. What we learned in my country over the last five years, and we're learning in the most dramatic and painful way today, is that once you start with downgrading rights, then you have slightly the chance to finish. So it is this negative lesson of the indivisibility of human rights that human rights international teachers like to teach to their students. Indivisibility of human rights means that this is a, 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 a united corp, a united corpus of uh, rules and norms. And uh, what we know here, what we learned, but one thing is to teach it and another thing is to live with it, is that uh, once you downgrade your right to, to health or to labor, very soon you will come to a situation that you will have to downgrade your right to political participation or your right to, to, to freedom of expression or freedom of association. And this is what happens all along these five years in my country. Let, let, me, let me then illustrate to you in two minutes what I mean by this negative domino of human rights violations. The, 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 the target in this bailout program is the social uh, state. Everywhere. That is not Greek particularity. That is everywhere. So, once you need to 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 tackle the issue of right to labor. The Greek public sector, according to the instructions of the Troika in 2013, had to deliver 3,000 dismissals in, uh, in two months. What was the result? The Greek government decided that they should seize the operation of the Greek public television. So, restricting or downgrading the social right to labor of 3,000 people working in the Greek public television and radios everywhere in my country led to a radical downgrading, to a radical violation of the right of freedom of expression and the right of freedom of information of the Greek public constitutionally enshrined ever since 1974. So you see how from a need to downgrade a social right according to the financial adjustment program, you arrive to a situation where you have to violate an individual right, such as freedom of expression and freedom of association, or freedom of uh, information. This, given the fact that there is no political consensus within the Greek parliament, given the fact that there is no political consensus within the Greek body politic within the Greek public opinion and the Greek society could not pass via the normal parliamentary way, via the normal parliamentary procedure. The result is that all such, such actions pass through emergency acts. So you see that this negative domino starts from downgrading a social right, which is the right to work, from downgrading this right, you arrive to a situation of violating the individual right of freedom of, of information via the situation of also downgrading and violating the right of political participation. 
violating the democratic rights of the political community of a constitutionally enshrined nation. That is a very crucial question in the sense that uh, one could uh, have expected from this government to, to have a far more uh, progressive human rights agenda than the previous ones. But that has been only relatively the case. You know, when uh, you need to govern a country in the shape of my country today, which is far from being uh, a normal body politic, human rights cannot be uh, a priority, and I'm very unhappy to say that. You can only clean your boat in a situation where the sea allows you to. When you're in a situation of a storm, you cannot clean Greek administration, Greek political system, and Greek political culture, whatever political culture, Dutch, English, German, from uh, all the, the wrong paths. In times where survival is at stake, and unfortunately this is the case with my country today, human rights are necessarily a collateral damage. And I speak to you being a, a, a human rights defender over the last 25 years, and I'm extremely sad to acknowledge that, that in this situation, you cannot expect that during this struggle, there's going to be a human rights agenda which will flourish in this country. Uh, when we talk about the far right, we need to consider one thing. That the extreme right political culture uh, develops in uh, political communities who suffer from political humiliation, from defeat, and from social and national isolation and stigmatism, which is the case today with the Greek one. And uh, I think that everybody who actually, in an easy way, reproduces current Northern European stereotypes about what it means to be Greek, should consider that uh, the basic damage is not that I am insulted from that, because that is a damage that, at the end, I should carry the moral weight of it. The damage is the fact that a considerable part of my compatriots do not have the moral and political resistance to such stigmatism. That's why I am afraid that today one of the fundamental repercussions of this crisis management, management is the consolidation of the far-right agenda in the Greek politics. Of course, the crisis is not the only one to blame for that. Because, you know, there are countries who have been under severe financial adjustment programs comparable to the Greek one, such as Portugal or Ireland, that do not face the development of far-right. On the other hand, you have countries such as Austria, Finland, France, or England that do not face anything comparable to the Greek situation where you see a development, a drastic development of the far right, which means that the far right is not only the result of the crisis in Europe today. The far right is a part of the European historical identity of the 20th century and the European political culture of modernity.
This is the one billion dollar question, my friend. That I cannot answer. Listen, uh, one of the most illustrious one of the most important intellectuals of the 20th century in Europe, the Italian Antonio Gramsci, said that we need to, to strike the balance between the pessimism of knowledge and the optimism of our will. This is what we're trying to do here.